Do you remember this Facebook feature? If you're new here, hi, my name is Jacqueline and welcome to Color Me Well, a channel where diversity and mental health conversations collide. If you haven't seen part one of this episode, please be sure to check it out and hit the like button if you found this topic useful to you. Today, Denise and I continue the conversation around social media. So sit back, relax, and enjoy our chat here on Color Me Well. Going into our next point, uh, we eventually branched off. I think MSN was still a thing when Facebook happened, but Mm -hmm. I remember going to Facebook and not knowing what was going on. It was this (laughs) overwhelming social media platform that, like, it's like you were saying with friends story just became this big collection of friends and but some of them or good majority of them you have zero clue who they are I now even feel sometimes like I don't even know what the purpose of Facebook is anymore (laughs) um because all these people are on it but it's just like okay it's a way of connecting but I don't know like what was your first interaction with Facebook and what did you think yeah, I think, I guess when, at that time when it launched, uh, again, I think it was like in the mid 2000s, um, I still had this remnant of uh, how I used Friendster back then. So my my tendency was to do the exact same thing as you did. And it almost became this like, resp- just this repository of, of, of friends, repository of connections, repository of information about you that you were willing to put online. Um, but it, I remember, but it also was kind of bringing yourself to other people's attention again. So if you're, you know, if, if you're feeling a little bit like, oh, no one's remembering me, then you go on friend, you go on Facebook and you poke someone. Do you remember that? <laughs> and it became creepy after a while too yeah it me. <laughs> because it's like it usually goes into like this awkward situation where do you poke back like do you take this conversation uh onto the person's wall instead it didn't help grow any specific relationship further it was just kind of like a way to you know remind people that you exist and I'm, it's actually one of the features of, of, of facebook that i'm glad it is no longer there because it's t- so creepy (laughs) if you think about it and how it could be misused and I think a lot of people were using it for like other kind of like to to send other messages as well I don't know I'm making an assumption here (laughs) but yeah like it's it's so it's that's uh it's so interesting like the fact that um it was like you you mentioned like having like those reminders that you would or that that person exists to you and it's so crazy because I was even just thinking about um you know the fact that we branched off so far from Facebook now and it's become like multiple platforms that everyone's using kind of like similar to back then but Mm -hmm. now it feels more of like a very public um outlet and so there's Facebook there's Instagram there's Twitter there's Snapchat there's TikTok and it just feels so bizarre because it feels like your all of your life choices, whether it's what you're eating, what you're waking up to, what you're watching on TV, what you're, you know, doing for your day is just all documented into these different platforms mm-hmm. and people are seeing it. People are interacting with you. People are feeding off of what you're doing and I find sometimes that I do this where I will post a picture and I am literally on my phone seeing how much interaction it's getting. At some point I, I just went along with the trend and now it's, it's there, but I, I think now it's definitely different for me, but how were you when, all these other platforms came out. Did you jump onto Instagram or Twitter or any of those other platforms or did you just stick with the one or what did you do? I think I'd consider myself as like a late adopter. 
Uh, I've never been on Snapchat. I've never been on TikTok. Um, I also have never been on Twitter, um, even though it became really, really big uh, for for quite a while. Uh, I have mostly uh, stuck with Facebook. Um, it just became like this really easy way to to stay in touch. Um, and other than that, it's just Instagram for me. So that's why whenever I talk about like, you know, the social media uh, influencers that, you know, I, I follow, it tends to be, um, you know, mostly on on who it is that I watch on YouTube or on, on Instagram. So those I say for me are the, the three main platforms that I use and that I continue to use right now. These platforms don't feel as erratic as say Vine was or TikTok is or Snapchat. I mean, like I didn't feel like I tapped into those platforms as much. Yeah. yeah and I think that's why I haven't really connected with Snapchat or with TikTok all that much. Like I, I had Snapchat for a few, maybe like a couple of years and then I, I kind of just ventured off of it. It's a lot of it's a lot of information overload overall, like the amount of the different amount of apps and social media platforms that you keep. I feel like it's just a lot of different types of information being shared in different ways. It really brings me to the next part of the topic, which is um, being able to practice uh, safe social. It's all around the fact of how social media affects your mental health and it does. And we talked about this earlier about how, you know, it's the way that we're using it and the way that it brings us some sort of joy when we see somebody like a post or when we see somebody interact with our stories on Instagram. And we feel this validation mm -hmm. when this happens. I think a lot of what happens is, is that people and even younger people because this is the world that they're starting in now is that they feel like that's their validation. That's where the relationship starts and that's where they need to be able to go to find that substance. So I want to know for you, for example, when you're using social media, do you have any ways in which you're looking at it, you know, from a perspective that helps you to kind of separate yourself a little bit? Back then, I would look at these things, these updates, and I would think, oh, wow, they have a great life. And, you know, whether I knew them personally or not, you know, I, I really didn't realize that people would only tend to post the good things. Thankfully, as you start to grow up, you start to realize that that is the tendency of how people use social media. They will show kind of the best sides of themselves. Um, and also, thankfully, as well, now kind of social media is really growing and really trying to highlight all aspects of life. I mean, I've seen um, a lot of YouTube channels and, and, and Instagram users out there that are just sharing kind of like their regular mom or regular girl because they want people to understand that, hey, um, you know, we may pre present a picture this certain way. However, the reality of this is, is completely different. But I think in terms of what really made me uh, realize and really helped me manage my social media use was when I had read an article where they talked about how people are now addicted to social media and they had mentioned the same things that you'd mentioned um, you know just now where you know you would make a post and you wait for someone to give a like or have a sort of, sort of reaction and what that did is really kind of give you a boost of dopamine. So we become very addicted to social media because we're always like chasing that dopamine high with every like. The moment I read that, it really did make me realize that, hey, this is, there are negative implications if I'm not kind of like just managing, you know, how much I'm following um, my account, for example. So uh, what I do now is that I, when I do post something, I try not to follow how many likes I get or don't get, <laughs> how, how much engagement I get or don't get. And obviously, you know, the purpose of this channel is just to be able to reach out 
um, to to others and kind of be able to share our stories that way. But um, I'm, I'm really trying to hone into the main purpose of what we're doing rather than the numbers game of, of, of things. How about you? How are you kind of managing that now? Especially since you're, you're a social media queen. <laughs> How are you managing your social media use? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Getting the title of social media queen, that's a, that's a big <laughs> one. But um, I would say I really try to look at the other side of the coin and a great uh, TED Talk that I think everyone should watch is um, called Is Social Media Hurting Your Mental Health by mm -hmm. Bailey Parnell. She brings about a lot of points that you mentioned as well, Denise, and uh, one of them being what you were referring to as a highlight reel. It's looking at somebody's life through snippets and just being very... Um, having this perspective of just going down this dark hole of like why is my life not like that or why am I not happy right now or why am I not experiencing this clear joy that this person is experiencing from the beautiful food that's laid out on the table for them mm -hmm. and it's just snippets like it's it's being able to recognize the exaggeration from the reality um and so I think sometimes I do get caught up in that and it's just about taking myself away um, and even just realizing too that I need some time away from the screen. I do have that really weird like urge to just grab it and just look at it and then the moment I start doing that I try to make myself more conscious of the fact that okay you know what you're taking away from this person who's in front of you right now trying to have a conversation. You're taking away from you know, being outside in nature because you're too busy taking all of these photos and trying to post them to your story. Mm -hmm. And some things are just better, I feel, to experience. Um, and I also try really hard to, to look at other um, websites or even just like books that also help to explain that. So um, a great social media website, which uh, Bailey Parnell also uh, created is safesocialmedia.co. It's on Instagram but it provides a lot of great tips and tricks to be able to help manage social media alongside your mental health and to really think about the way that social media trends or even just anything that's going on with social media in your life, like it does have an effect on your life. So um, that has really helped me to kind of open my eyes a little bit to see that, okay, there are, there's a lot of behavior that is going on that I'm doing from all this scrolling, all this like interacting that it may not be so good for me. Um, there was also a book that I read called Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. It's a very interesting read. It's something that I feel like you need to kind of go in and have like a very um, set, kind of like understanding because he's very, he's very intense about how he approaches uh, getting rid of like, like, you know, getting rid of technology and being able to just kind of connect. But it's stuff like, you know, replacing social media with real connection and putting time specifically into your day to be able to have conversations with people. And so it's, it's stuff like that, like, you can definitely look into different parts, I feel that will help you kind of rediscover life without having to live through a lens all the time of like mm -hmm. what other people are doing going forward it's just something that there's so much information out there that like you said it's coming out but it's just being aware of what's a lot and what's too much information and also information that's not i would say like backed up by facts like it's I think that's the dangerous part of social media too is just there's so much coming out from so many different like different channels different platforms and we have to be very mindful of what's real versus what's not factual <laughs> because that can, be, that can be very dangerous too this is this is something that with this pandemic and because we're all alone to our thoughts that we continue to educate ourselves more and be able to to actually think about the repercussions of a lot of things we put online, um, a lot of the things that we post, it does have consequences and it doesn't have to end that way for everybody. 
Yeah, and it's very interesting that you had mentioned that because, you know, one of the books that I've read recently, it's called Essentialism by Greg McKeown. He speaks, uh, there's a section in his book where he talks about that exactly, how technology is actually, it's, it's fantastic in staying, keeping us connected, keeping everyone online. But at the same time, it's almost lowered the threshold of the type of information that we absorb. So we're not only accessing a lot of knowledge nowadays, we are also inundated by um, other people's opinions essentially you know as you said it becomes harder to really get an understanding of you know what's real versus you know what's just posted out there um for 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 a very specific purpose whether it's to you know become an inf a famous influencer or perhaps have like this really really um strong opinion on on something so it's really interesting how you know, technology has given us a lot of agency to do things nowadays, but it also, that same agency has, is doing a lot of damage to mental health um, overall. Let's face it, we live in a hyper-connected world, but just because social media is all around us does not mean that it needs to consume our life. Please drop a comment and let us know, how do you manage social media in your life? Do you have any internet detox tips that you would recommend? We hope that this conversation empowered you on your mental health journey and that you hit like and subscribe so that we can see you again on our next episode.